I'm going to give you 19 tips over the next six minutes that will help ensure you have an enjoyable and relaxing experience in Singapore. Let's start with some money tips. In Singapore, you can use a credit card to pay for the bus or train. You don't need to buy a prepaid ticket if you already have a contactless Visa or MasterCard. You can touch this card to the reader as you get on the bus or train and touch off again as you exit. It will calculate the fare automatically based on the distance you traveled and it shouldn't cost you more than one or two dollars. Singapore is a very cashless city, but cash is still needed for tourists who aren't going to spend very long in the city. Hawker centers and coffee shop restaurants typically only accept cash or QR code payment. And if you're visiting for a short time, it's not worth setting up QR codes. Therefore, you'll need cash. I recommend 50 to $100 per person each time you go out to make sure you're fully covered. Try to avoid the $100 note though, as it's difficult for people to give you change. Speaking of cash, Singapore coins are different sizes. The coins were resized a few years ago, but both sizes are still acceptable. This is really only an issue for the 10 or 20 cent coins, as long as you bear in mind that the old or new $1 coins, which are quite quite distinct can be used interchangeably. Many shopkeepers I've found are quite helpful if you're unsure, though they do appreciate fast calculations. There are still some paid toilets in Singapore that the 10 cent coin can be used for, but all shopping malls have free toilets. These free toilets are usually air conditioned and clean, so if you need to go, head to a shopping mall. You don't need to add a tip in Singapore. If you're dining out somewhere that warrants a tip, the restaurant will automatically add a 10% service charge to your bill. Restaurants that do this will indicate so on their menu, either with a disclaimer at the bottom or by marking prices with a plus plus. Nearly every restaurant that adds service charge to your bill will also add sales tax as well. This is currently 8%. Outdoor coffee shop restaurants and hawker centers do not typically add service charge or tax. The prices displayed here are net and include everything. If you're interested in saving money, try buying local coffee. A local copy will cost around a dollar to a dollar fifty, far cheaper than the five to eight dollars that a cappuccino or a Starbucks coffee will cost. Local coffee can be found in shopping malls, hawker centers, and the aptly named coffee shops. My favorite is iced coffee C Kosong, which is iced coffee with creamer and no sugar. I often find the regular Singapore coffee too sweet. If you want me to share more money-saving tips, hit that like button and let me know. Another money-saving tip is to avoid buying a hotel breakfast and to eat local instead. A local breakfast, such as Kai toast with eggs, will cost you less than $6, far cheaper than anything from a hotel. The next tip is that if you're eating out, bring a packet of tissues with you. Most outdoor eateries do not provide tissues or serviettes, and a packet of tissues are also good for choping a table. This means to reserve a table in an outdoor eatery by leaving something on the table. Don't worry, it won't get stolen. Singaporeans typically leave a packet of tissues or an umbrella or bags, books, or even laptop computers on a table to reserve the table. If you need to buy tissues, usually the drink store will sell some, or you might be offered some by a tissue seller. These should cost roughly 30 cents to a dollar. While we're on the topic of eating food, make sure you try the food at Changi Airport. Good food at an airport might sound crazy, but Singapore has gone to a lot of effort to make sure that there is great, cheap, and tasty food located in and around the airport. Check out the food court in Terminal 3 airside where you wait for your plane or jewel which is landside in Singapore itself if you're looking for that good cheap food. If you need extra time to check out the food or explore jewel itself where the waterfall is many airlines will let you drop your bag at jewel early. In general if you're at least three hours early for your flight you can drop your bag at jewel and you can even check in a day before your flight. Early check-in is only available for some airlines that use Changi and these include Singapore Airlines, Emirates, Qantas and Qatar. I left a link down in the description to find out more information. When you're arriving at Changi Airport I highly recommend you take a taxi to get into town. The taxi is quicker and more convenient than taking the train or bus, particularly if you have lots of large bags with you. It costs about $30 to $40 depending on how far you're going. Avoid the white and black taxis in the taxi queue though as these cost more. They are good though if you're traveling as a family or with lots of luggage, where a larger taxi can be a better alternative than taking two taxis. My next tip then when it comes to taxis is to avoid taking a taxi at all in the downtown core central area of the city. There is a $3 surcharge added and the taxi will often spend significant significant time waiting in traffic. This is where I usually recommend visitors take a train or a bus or even walk as it can give you a significant saving. For ride sharing and taxi booking apps, check out CDG Zig or Tada. These are my two favorite at the moment for good service and ease of finding a driver. You can also try Grab or Gojek. There is no Uber in Singapore after it was sold to Grab. If you're moving around a lot in that downtown or orchard area, do consider walking. Yes, it's hot, but you can adjust to the heat and it saves you a lot on those surcharges and flag falls that make taxis expensive if traveling over short distances. Many MRT stations are also very close to each other in the central area and you can end up walking significantly further if you insist on taking the MRT. This is what I used to do when I first visited Singapore and I've since learned that walking can be much quicker. Buses are also a convenient alternative if you can figure out which routes will take you where you want to go. My next tip then is to use busrouter.sg to figure out which bus routes can help you travel around. It's a free website that shows you all the routes and stops on a convenient map. It will show you how long until your next bus and it even gives you a live location of that bus. It can really help 
help you to figure out which bus to catch. Google Maps is also good for planning a journey from A to B, but I found some quirks in the algorithm where it doesn't account properly for some transit times, like walking up and down MRT entrances. If you end up taking the downtown MRT line, be careful which direction you catch it in. The line does a loop on itself, which means a few stations, such as Bugis and Talok Aya, can feel like you're catching the train in an odd direction. When you are going to catch the MRT, make sure you stand on the left on the escalator. People like to use the right side as an express lane to get to their train faster. For another tip on how to move around in Singapore's hot and wet climate, check out these shop houses. You can walk through the sheltered part as shade from the sun or as cover from the rain, and covered walkways are also extensive along busy footpaths, and they can be used to cross roads while staying dry. When you're crossing a road, be careful of cars turning into you though. Even when pedestrians have right of way, you need to take care when crossing the road in Singapore, as cars are allowed to turn towards a pedestrian crossing and are supposed to give way to pedestrians. I suggest you make eye contact with the driver though, particularly if you aren't part of the crowd crossing, to make sure that the driver store you and will stop for you. I see tourists make a lot of common mistakes like this. Check out this video next on mistakes that you should avoid when you visit Singapore.